Yo, what's up guys, it's Talon. Today I'm gonna be talking to you guys about some of the most common mistakes I see in the mid elos to lower elos. Um, so I'd say really anything from like gold plat level to all the way up to master grandmaster levels. These are really the most common mistakes that I see. Um, recently I've been, you know, obviously playing on a lot of smurfs when I do these challenges to get the challenger on different roles. Um, so I've kind of experienced every different type of elo. And then recently with the season reset as well, you're obviously playing with a lot more people since everyone resets to a lower elo. So I've been experiencing a lot of um, just games in general against these types of people um, of all different ranks. And so I just wanted to share kind of some of the most common mistakes I see in those games um, that could hopefully help you guys a bit. So anyways, let's get right into it. So first off, we have objectives really, and this is kind of like playing, um, deciding on which objective to go early on in the game. So oftentimes I'll see everyone overvalue dragons and never value heralds. Um, this is, in my opinion, quite bad. In general, I feel like herald is more valuable as an early game objective. Now it definitely depends on the situation. I'm not saying that every game you want to go for herald or every game you want to go for dragon. But some of the main things to keep in mind when you're deciding on which objective to go for would be are you a scaling comp or not um if you're a scaling comp then generally it's going to be really good to get gold onto some of your scaling champions so going for that herald early on is going to be nice for getting um you know that gold and kind of staying in the game in terms of gold early on so you can get your items in general any champions that value items and gold a lot are going to want to get that herald and then you know you drop it as the jungler in whatever lane you can the snowball that that uh, like kind of carrier that champion that uses a lot of gold um and then additionally these earlier game comps they can kind of go either way well they're going for herald or going for dragon so going for herald is going to make it easier to snowball the game and allow you to end the game quicker but the dragon is going to be more of a safety net for these late game comps where you'll kind of have that extra late game um insurance even though you don't norm normally have the best late game champions having those dragons is going to give you those extra permanent stats whereas the herald buff uh you know the, the gold you get from the herald is kind of does fall off you know as the game goes on uh for the simple fact that obviously once you guys all get to full items it's essentially like the herald was useless um so in general just valuing kind of the objectives and, and kind of understanding when you should go for what um people generally just always seem to force dragons and then another important thing for the objectives is kind of deciding on which to fight based on who's stronger so typically you'll want to try to path towards your stronger lane so if your bot lane is doing really well you might want to play towards dragon but if your top laner is doing super super well that would be a good time to play for the uh you know the herald uh because in general ideally you know you could you go for uh the dragon or the herald in the situations that i was talking about but sometimes if you're just too behind or you just like won't win the fight if you go for that objective it's kind of pointless which is why you know you kind of have to play towards your stronger lanes in a lot of these situations as well and so on the topic of objectives guys i'm um, going further into that is people really not understanding uh two things before objectives and that's one backing before objectives so it's very important to push your lane before the objective starts or before it spawns. I'd say around 30 seconds before it spawns is a good time to roughly try to start backing before it. Uh, that way you can get your items bought. You can push out the lanes and then back. So you'll you know get full health, full mana, all of that so that you're ready for that fight. A lot of times people won't really pay attention to the objective timer and then it spawns and then they're like, oh, let's go fight there. They don't pay attention to which of their teammates are alive, how many items they have, how much gold they haven't spent, all of those things. So just understanding before the objective, it's important to one, push your lanes so that they're not, you know, you're not losing turrets or anything. And then two, obviously backing before it so you can buy items and all of that. Uh, in general, those two things before objectives are going to be very, very important. And then another important thing about backing, guys, is understanding item power spikes. So oftentimes, you know, people will overforce fights right before objectives or will not pay attention to their gold and then they'll, they'll force a fight right before they get a really important item. So say I am a Vi in the early game and I'm 150 gold away from Trinity Force and instead of backing 20 seconds before the objective when I have enough gold for Trinity Force, um, instead maybe I will just like go force a fight or go to Herald or Dragon before that happens and then I'll lose the fight because I'm not as strong as I otherwise would be had I bought that item. So understanding you want to play around your item power spikes so if you can get those items before the objectives that's going to be ideal and that's really going to help you win those fights. So that is another big mistake that I see people often make. And then the next mistake that I see often, guys, is um, kind of ob often relating to top laners, but really anyone, and that's split pushing without understanding the goal of split pushing. Um, so oftentimes an objective will be spawning and we'll have someone in the top lane who's not really getting a turret or they're just getting some useless, you know, tier three turret that's not getting you much value. Um, so in general, 
I would say the important things to keep in mind in the uh, going for for split pushing is can you win the fight on the objective if you don't split push? Oftentimes, if you're going to win the fight anyways um, by not split pushing and you're just going to be able to like win the 5v5 fight or like because you're stronger and all of that, it's probably more valuable to go for the fight instead just because oftentimes, especially in solo or duo queue, uh, you are going to have teammates fighting objectives regardless. So if you think you can win the fight anyways, you might as well go there and just kind of try to help out. Um, also, the times where it's good to split push are more like when you are actually losing the game or when you're a champion who's really behind and you don't feel like you have much value in the fights so instead your goal is to just kind of provide value by distracting the opponents and drawing them to you during the objective but then when people split push they'll often just kind of split push like 45 seconds before the objective instead of like keeping the wave pushing and then not really going on the wave until about 20 seconds 10 seconds before the objective spawns because if you go 45 seconds before the objective spawns then they can just go up to top lane kill you and then go back to bot lane and get the objective but if you die or you're in the top lane split pushing about 10 20 seconds before the objective and you're pushing and threatening that turret right when the objective spawns if you can kind of time your wave with the objective spawning then that's going to be more valuable in terms of drawing someone to you and letting your team take the uh, you know the objective and everything so just understanding kind of when to split push is another common mistake that i see and i do have a video about split pushing if you guys are interested in learning more about that after that guys another common mistake i see is people having too big of champion pools and also not understanding when to pick their champions so oftentimes people will you know they'll, they'll tell me they get bored of playing you know a small amount of champions and they'll play like 10 different champions and then they'll be confused on, on why they can't climb uh for me and for i think most people if you're playing this many champions it's just going to be too hard to possibly be like super proficient and super good on all of them uh simply learning these this many different champions with so many abilities and everything is just not possible even if you've already played a lot of these champions and you play them quite a bit to just become like really good at them and to be really consistent on them most people have champions that they win a lot more on than others for me i would say this season i've been winning a lot on vi camille jace and so those champions are kind of the ones i'm playing when i can uh rather than some champs i was trying earlier that didn't really work well for me now it doesn't it doesn't mean that i'm not like okay at these champions or i'm not decent at them but some champs just work better with your play style or in the meta and once you guys really figure out what champs you win the most on i really recommend sticking to those couple of champions and once again if you guys are interested in champion pool i do also have a video on that i know a lot of these things are kind of me reiterating things that i've already have videos on i just kind of wanted to you know have you guys learn some of the most important things to learn so that is another important thing is the champion pool and then after that guys builds are also a very important thing uh i think people definitely obsess over builds too much and don't just go for consistent like common builds so what i mean by this is generally there's a good website um that a youtuber it's stewart has it's called wild rift fire and that website has plenty of good builds for champions not every champion build on that website is ideal certainly many of them are good but not the absolute best and, and that's good enough you don't need the perfect build for every champion to learn from uh, or, or to, rather to win simply just having a consistent build that works well most of the time is good enough so i would say if you're playing a champion like a bruiser or a tank make sure your build has hp armor and magic resist all in it because you want all three of those stats generally as a bruiser you're also going to want some attack damage of course but if you're playing a tank then you're going to want those three stats um, because it's going to be the most effective for general tankiness and then the few situational things that are important to understand in general when building are one anti-heal guys so there's three anti-heal items mortal reminder thorn mail and uh morello morello nomicon i think is what it's called and so those are the three anti-heal items and you're gonna want one of those into any comps that heal a lot like soraka and those type of champions uh, another important thing is understanding the damage types of champions so if there's a lot of ap on a comp then you're probably going to want to build more re magic resist and if there's a lot of ad then you're going to want to build a lot of armor and then the last important thing is understanding counter building to tanks so champions with high hp you're going to want items like blade of the rune king or like leandries that do percentage health based damage and then into champions that are building a lot of armor or magic resist you're going to want um you know armor penetration or magic penetration uh that is percentage based so those are kind of like the main things to keep in mind when you're building but in general i think just consistent builds are going to work well enough for you guys so i don't recommend going for all these crazy builds just look up a video um i wouldn't actually always recommend looking up a video i would say the best thing is using wild rift fire or 
looking at the top leaderboards and if you see that like three to five people on the top 10 leaderboards are all building a very similar thing then you can assume that's also a good build those are kind of the two places i would look the reason i say don't look at youtube videos is because a lot of times youtubers will make videos about new builds all the time and these these videos are usually more like suboptimal builds that they're kind of playing for fun or they just want a new fun build to try out and because they're so good it's usually going to look, look good anyways when they're playing it but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually the best build uh again th these videos aren't always bad sometimes they are good and helpful builds but oftentimes they're not going to be the optimal builds so i would say using those websites or the leaderboards are going to be good but just be aware if you do use the leaderboards that sometimes people have troll builds which is why i would look at like three to five people and if they all have similar builds then you can go for that so overall just building keep it simple keep a very simple build just look at those few minor things like the anti-healing especially and the magic resist first armor and then you'll probably be good with building and then the last thing guys is many times people don't understand when to value fighting and grouping with your team versus when to value split pushing or farming or these other important things and so people just really they always ask me they tell me you know my teammates are all mid lane and my opponents are all mid lane they're all there if i'm not there they're just gonna die and we're gonna lose the fight and maybe that's true it might happen but you guys will find as you you know you play more that sometimes you being in that fight doesn't even really matter and additionally there's sometimes losing a fight is not as important as losing farm or gaining turrets or other things and so the important things to look at in these situations are really just what will you lose versus gain from this fight so say that you are a jungler and you're deciding to farm three topside camps instead of going into a mid lane fight there's no baron up there's no dragon up there's just a fight that might happen you don't think it's going to happen but your teammates might be stupid and start it because they're idiots right so this might happen what are you going to gain you will gain three camps and a blue buff so that basically amounts to roughly like 500 gold let's say so you're gaining we'll say 500 gold and what you're losing is possibly losing maybe your turret in mid lane possibly losing your fight and losing gold to them but there's no objective up so there's nothing else to be lost so you're guaranteeing 500 gold with the potential to lose some gold but in reality oftentimes these fights they're really messy and maybe you only lose by like one kill or something and it's just fine it's whatever you know you 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 lose one one person but you gain that gold and you gain that gold on yourself and you probably trust yourself more than your teammates so that's going to be more valuable for you now on the other hand the elder dragon and the baron are both up your teammates are on mid lane where should you be no you shouldn't be farming your blue buff because your blue buff is not going to matter since the game is going to end if you lose this elder dragon so essentially like understanding when it's actually going to be detrimental to the game state versus when it's just some random fight that doesn't really affect anything is kind of the main things to understand and i'm not going to be able to explain every situation to you guys because simply there are so many mistakes so many situations so many mistakes to be made in this game i can't possibly give you guys tips on every single situation so i really recommend trying out you know when next time you out you see that situation you're like wow my teammates are idiots they're all mid lane i really want to go help them because i think they're going to fight just be like no i'm going to go farm i'm just going to let i'm just going to see what happens do that three or four times or however many times and then see what ends up happening in that game do you gain that extra value from just farming and from ignoring your teammates dying in that random fight where there's no objective up or do you just lose the game off it because your team gets team wiped see what happens after doing it a couple times and see you know the value you gain additionally it's important to understand what type of champion you are obviously support champions kind of have to be following their teammates around so if your teammates are there you can try pinging them off but as a support you're probably going to want to be with your team oftentimes whereas as a carry jungler like a kha'zix valuing your own gold and yourself is going to be important so also understanding your champion and all that's going to be really important but in general just kind of you know try these things out see what happens you know the only way you're really going to learn is from testing these things you're not going to learn by just you know doing the same thing over and over again uh and expecting a different result so i would just recommend trying these things out sometimes just try to ignore your teammates and value that gold and those other you know important objectives or turrets or other things rather than those random fights in mid lane so that's going to be it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed these were just some important tips uh, uh you know mistakes that i see in lower to mid to even high elos really um I know a lot of these things I've talked about before in videos. I just kind of wanted to condense these different tips into one video. Again, I do have many videos on different things like split pushing, like objectives, um, you know, all these different things I probably have made a video on at some point. So if you guys are interested in more specifics on these different topics, let me let me know if I haven't made a video on it and I can try making a video 
I hope it was helpful for you guys overall, and I'll see you later.